This is Kim Meyer, host of Choose to Rise. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. This is Julianne Condia, host of Rewritten here on Public House Media. Thank you so much for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you are done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Rewritten, where we will talk about you having limitless potential and can rewrite your story at any time. No matter your background, your past, or current situation, you can have the type of life you crave. A new show comes out every single Monday. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of Rewritten. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. Hello, it's No Filter Friday on Public House Media, and as promised, a female executive is coming up in the Me Too movement. So I'm going to take a minute to to like share the broadcast, get our peeps in, because it's a live discussion for a reason, and the tea is ready. Oh, I can't tell you how excited about this I am. I haven't been excited. I haven't been this excited since last week. <laughs> so that's a, a week. A week is a long time. Uh, hello, David, Bob, Key. does it sound okay? How do we sound? Because it's we, you know, it's not just me. It's me, and you. Hopefully it sounds okay. Okay, I'm gonna take a second and share the broadcast because I have been like, working on doing the show for like two weeks. And let me tell you, it's juicy, y'all. It is juicy. It is positively juicy. Oh, I sound fab. Oh, how fantastic. Love you too. Share. That's not the page that you're sharing it on. Come on now. Okay. Heather Perry is going down posting. Okay, folks, let's go back to the original situation here. Yay. How fantastic. Okay, so here is the T, literally, right here, and then figuratively, okay? So probably like a year ago on this show, maybe a little bit less, um, I talked about it a few times, but I think the time, I think the show that I talked about it the most was the Terry Crews, um, the Terry Crews episode. So, with that being said, I said that there was a female executive from Sony, not Amy Pascal, that's an obvious choice, not Amy Pascal, that was going to come down in the Me Too movement. This Heather Perry isn't even who I was talking about, which is the even crazier thing. I didn't really think the Heather Perrys of the world would get really caught up in this whole Me Too thing, but... She has, somebody's blown, no, I shouldn't say somebody, like, more than a few people have blown the whistle on her. So, the official statement is, Heather Perry has been put on leave, administrative leave, from Live Nation. Um, because they are investigating into her abusing her employees, mainly her assistants. Now, here's the thing. I met good old HP, if you can call it meeting her, back when she was at Happy Madison. She has produced several hundred million dollars in films, and who knows what else she's been up to at Live Nation, Uh, because they put her in charge of production in some way, like... They put Heather Perry in production, in, in charge of, like, production and something, 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 something. Anyway. So I met her, quote unquote, back when she was at Happy Madison. And if by meeting her, you mean being eyed up and down like a piece of trash. And I, what I vividly remember, which I don't mind, like I've been looked up and down several times in my life. It's kind of what they, you know, 
a lot of times it was what they were paying me for. So that doesn't bother me. Never been bothered, not going to be bothered. Being, you know, getting this, this here, this motion does not, bothers me nothing. John Dahlberg, oh my goodness, baby cakes. I haven't seen or heard from you in forever. How are you? I went to like, I think I went to high school with John Dahlberg. I don't know. Anyway, so that's besides the point. John's, John's a cool dude. Haven't seen him in forever. Any hoozles. So, <sighs> Happy Madison has a bungalow at Sony. And if you haven't seen or been to Sony, Sony is a very, very old lot. It was MGM's lot back in the day. If you go on the scoring stage, you can still see the notes from when they were scoring The Wizard of Oz. It is old, 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 old. <laughs> Brighton. Oh, God, don't even talk about it now. Um, so, Happy Sandler's Company, Happy Madison, has a bungalow there. And it's this old, ricky little thing, but it's, it's amazing. It's where the magic happens. Full bar, kegerator, the craft service room is to die for, as, you know, in true Sandler fashion. That's besides the point. We're getting off track here. So, when you walk in the front little screen door of Happy Madison, there's like a reception desk there, or Colonel Sanders, and then if you go to the right, oh, hush, eBay, hush. Um, if you go to the right, there's some other offices, and sometimes they use it to edit, just depends on what they're doing. Um, but when you curve around the reception desk, there's these stairs to the upstairs offices. And what I vividly remember about Heather is that her voice would just boom down these stairs of la, 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 la. And I was told that Heather Perry was assigned to Happy Madison by Sony to um to basically to, to, to keep the hose in line, to slap some hose up. She was there as um as Sony's enforcer, basically. Um, but of course, I was told that like on the low off the record, and that was my understanding of it. Well, with that being said, I remember one time, um, I, I they called me in for an audition, um, and I needed, because uh, everybody ran the lot, everybody has golf carts, right? That's like the best thing about being on the lot. Um, Pretty Little Liars golf carts on Warner Brothers are so cute. They're like pink and sparkly. It's amazing. But that's, again, we're off topic. That's besides the point. So I walked back in the office and I was like, hey, can I get a ride back up to the front gate? And the look this woman gave me, the, the, the chef of disgust was horrifying. Needless to say, I got my, I got my ride re regardless. Um, but, uh, she's just, she's just been an, uh, uh, you know, Every time I've thought or heard of her, that's what I think of is just her voice booming down the stairs at Happy Madison. Heaven forbid you breathe in the wrong direction. So we're going to we're going to talk about I'm pretty sure it was Hollywood Reporter that broke the news because this gets jo this gets juicy. It gets juicy, y'all. Okay, Heather Perry. Oh, come on. Okay, let me just get you a picture of her real fast. So, this is a very edited photo of Heather Perry. That's her. Uh, you can't even barely see it. Sorry, guys. Maybe, eh, you're just going to have to Google her. Anyway, so, October 9th. No, 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 no. Um, okay, so this is from Variety. Live Nation's production chief Heather Perry put on leave amid verbal abuse claims. Exclusive. Okay, so this was, uh, this was a Variety thing. So here is, if you're looking for the article, that's what you're looking for on Variety. Um, here it goes. The move comes more than six months after 10 employees filed HR complaints. According to multiple sources interviewed by Variety, over the past four months, the complaints apparently weren't went nowhere until Friday as Live Nation prepared an official response to the story. Perry, who is an executive producer of A Star is Born and produced documentaries of Lady, Lady Gaga and Sean Diddy Combs, was, has operated the film and TV production arm of Live, of Live Nation Entertainment since December 2015. 
I, up until this article, I had no idea that she had been gone from having Madison that long. Um, at Live Nation, we pride ourselves on having an open, accessible, and inclusive culture at Live Nation spokesperson said in a statement. We all take employee complaints seriously and have retained a third party to investigate. We've uh, placed Heather on leave during this time. Live Nation's initial response to employee allegations was much different. Two top executives held a meeting with four of the complaining employees in June, an audio recording of which was, ooh, she got recorded. That's when it gets hot. That's when it gets hot and bothered, y'all. When you have, when you got receipts, especially when you have more receipts than Kim Kardashian, like it's cool, it's cool to have receipts. But then when you take it up to the more than Kim Kardashian receipts, now you have a case. June, an audio recording of which was obtained by Variety, two employees told executives, they had sought therapy to deal with Perry, and one said he was suffering mental health problems because of her. The executive's knowledge working for Perry was not easy, but they also said if she were let go, the whole division might have to shut down. Not true, but we'll get to that shortly. Live Nation was doing just fine before Heather Perry showed up, and they'll be just fine long after she's gone. The entity exists with her, Live Nation President Joe Birch told, said on the recording. So when we're talking about dramatic steps, we're talking about what happens to the other 12 people at the production division. Michael Rapino, remember that name because it's important. The CEO of Live Nation Entertainment declined to be interviewed for the story. Perry issued a statement through her attorney, Martin Singer, which is the name that we say on this show constantly um martin singer um also represented brian singer and a few other people up in this whole hashtag me too thing he's getting a lot of business from hashtag me too uh marty martin singer is getting his pockets lined with this entire movement uh in which she said she was committed to maintaining a safe and respectful workplace I can tell you firsthand that is not true at all. Uh, it's unfortunate as a woman running a new division at one of the largest entertainment companies in the world that you can be targeted simply because of how others perceive a woman in power. Not true. There are amazing women in power all over many industries, but this one in particular. Um, you don't hear this about Kathleen Kennedy, Spielberg's producer. You don't hear this about Jen Jenkins, the biggest casting director ever. No. You don't. Do you hear this about, um, I, like, seriously, name one. Like, she's the first lady that's gotten caught up in this. Please. Please. Uh, I am deeply saddened by these accusations and gossip that in no way reflect who I am or what I truly value. If I hurt someone, I'm sorry, and I apologize. That was never in my intention. What a load of bull. Oh, my goodness. On December 19th, the person claiming to be the current Live Nation Productions employee gained access to the company's Twitter feed and posted an open letter to Rapino. Oh, juicy. Blasting the company for protecting an abusive monster. I want a normal work and working environment, the anonymous person wrote. One where I don't have to fear be called an expletive or having something thrown at me. Or one where I don't have to cry at my desk daily. Is that too hard to ask for? Over the past several months, Variety interviewed 23 former employees of Live Nation Productions and of Adam Sandler's company, Happy Madison, where Perry had previously worked for 10 years. Most of the people would only speak on condition of anonymity. We'll get to that in a minute as well. Uh, but those that have interviewed on the background describe Perry as manipulative, demeaning, and verbally abusive. Joseph Shepard, a formal digital producer at Live Nation Productions, says Perry was, says working for Perry forced him to seek therapy and medical treatment for anxiety and other ailments. It was legitimately the worst experience of my life, he said. I don't understand why nothing has been done. Shepard says he heard Perry use the terms, oh, Words that I can't say on this network. Um, on multiple occasions, he said she was especially hard on women. She hated every single woman that worked there, he said. He also says that once Perry became frustrated with black employees, she said, black people, you can't count on them for anything. Two other employees who asked not to be identified say they also heard Perry making disparaging response remarks about African Americans. I was degraded daily daily. By her, Shepard says she felt like it was okay to say those things. In frustration, he left the company in August. And her statement, Perry denied making discriminatory comments. To be clear, 
I've never been sexist, racist, or homophobic, she says. Anyone who really knows me knows that's true. Um, I don't think that she's truly, like, any sort of ism. She's just a horrendous, horrendous person. And she will use whatever she can to tear somebody down. Oh, Francine, Mar Francine, do you know, have you ever met Heather Perry? You've worked on things. Do you know her? Have you worked with her? She's awful. Um, several assistants who asked not to be identified told Variety of a pattern of abuse. One said she suffered from panic attacks because of Perry and that Perry once threw an iPhone charger at her. A second employee confirmed having witnessed the incident, which also reported to HR. This is where Live Nation's going to get in trouble. If you keep having HR problems with people and you do nothing about it, and it's multiple people, and you ignore it multiple times, or worse, retaliate, oh, Lord, the things the labor board will do to do. <laughs> David Bob, he said, she's not any ism. She's just a horrendous person. There's our quote of the week. Print it, David Bob. Keep printing it. You heard it here, honey. You heard it here. Anyway, um, back to my thing. Mike. Oh, Marty Singer. My client categorically denies that she threw an iPhone charger in an assistant singer said. I think that's a statement he makes for anybody. If anybody's like really into the No Filter Friday show, could you go back and look at every single time that Martin that Martin Singer, the attorney, said, My client categorically blah 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 denies blah blah blah. Like he just it's the same thing. He's just he just plugs in names and accusations. Several assistants said they were afraid to go to the bathroom lest they not be at their desk when an important call came in. Very Devil Wears Prada. How Miranda Priestly without the talent um, and without the fashion, which is even sadder. Uh, several said Perry would call on the weekends with extreme demands and they became terrified whenever the phone rang. I'm a dude, it's like the Devil Wears Prada, but not as fashionable. Several reported crying at their desk. It's not uncommon in Hollywood for executives to saddle their personal assistant with endless demeaning tasks and personal errands. One former production employee at Live Nations described being required to arrange Perry's underwear drawer and oversee her home remodeling job. Eric Lunch was excited to start work at Sandler's production company in the summer of 2013 his only previous experience was interning at caa which sounds like not a lot but that's a major major thing getting an internship at caa is no joke that's for people that have mbas in from stanford like it's not a joke it's an internship but it's not a joke and a friend connected him to an opening at Perry's assistant, which is a constant opening because she's always going through people like water um during a first weekend of his job, another assistant told him, you're too happy right now. You haven't been in here long enough. He quickly discovered what she meant. Perry had a long list of demands and would berate him for minor slip-ups. I dreaded every day going in, he said. It was just constant dodging of landmines, and if something blows up, it's just the end of the world. Um, if you can't handle a crisis, you have no business in the entertainment industry. Like, period. Like, there's no reason to get emotional over that stuff. But people do. Uh, Lunch said Perry never seemed to have seemed to see him as a person. After a few months, he hit a breaking point. It was just a meat grinder, he says. I was a shell of a person by the time I was done working there. When he quit, he says he told people she had to fire him, which he says what is not true. He says the experience caused him to get out of the business. I think she's the embodiment of everything that's wrong with the enter entertainment industry. And I agree with that statement, um, which we're going to get to later. <sighs> Alexandra Hernandez says she lasted two days at Happy Madison before deciding two days to quit in 2014. She says she thought it would be fun to work at Sandler's company, but it didn't turn out that way. Everyone says she's a hard ass, she says, but then I met her and it became immediately clear within the first few hours of her presence in the office that she had free reign to behave in any way she felt was, a, was appropriate. Um, which goes back to my statement about her being assigned to Happy Madison, because I will say, um, like, if you work at Happy Madison, like, you're probably going to get yelled at at some point, but it's probably for something, um, just like any other production company, probably for something substantial. Um, Happy Madison, you know, prides itself on fun. And you all know this. I don't have to tell you this. Like, 
Sandler makes movies because it's fun and for no other reason. Um, there are really, really uppity, sniffy, stuffy production companies in this town. Happy Madison's not one of them. Um, like, there's no reason. I, and I always say this, too. Like, especially if you're working in comedy, like, there's no reason to be a horribly miserable person. Like, if you're horribly miserable and it's so emotional, like, go work in drama. Like, you, there's no reason to work in comedy. Uh, Perry has a lengthy assistant manual at Happy Madison obtained by Variety, which laid out the requirements of the job in extreme detail. Among dozens of other tasks, the assistant had to keep track of Perry's prescriptions, make sure her car was serviced, take her, take care of her dog, including pouring melted butter over the dog's food and make, and make sure that Perry's home was kept stocked with Mountain Valley water. Hernandez raised a concern about some of the duties. She got up in my face. She says, I do remember shaking in my boots as a fellow woman. It didn't expect, I didn't expect a woman to treat me that way. Hernandez, as that was the sign I needed the entertainment, that the entertainment was no longer for me. She's now a yoga instructor. She went way far the other way. (laughs) Just what you need is live gossip. Um, so other low level employees who asked not to be identified told Variety that Perry would zero in on their insecurities and exploit them. It goes back to that ism thing. Like she was just using whatever armor she could to jab people. That's what she gets off on. Uh, a receptionist at Happy Madison said Perry regularly called her fat. She would also play on the desire to succeed in the entertainment business, telling them you They would never make it. It does not matter who you are, said one assistant. She would find a way to make sure that you knew you were not her and you were never going to be that. The mistreatment was not limited to assistance. When Wango went to work as a development executive at Live Nation Productions in November 2017, she said she was immediately noticed that her colleagues tensed up when other Perry walked by. I told you, didn't I tell you? I told you. Uh, Wendell sound soon found out that she was prone to angry outbursts and her mood moods were impossible to predict. Heather berated me on a regular basis for a whole slew of trivial reasons. She didn't like that my tone of voice on a call. She didn't like the way I phrased my email. She didn't appreciate my body language in a meeting. I braced whenever she called me into the office. Once she says Perry threatened to fire her for not responding to an email within 15 minutes when she was at lunch with an agent. Wingle says others were treated even worse and that Perry was especially hard on the women. One day I was sitting in our lawyer's office when she came in and berated our lawyer right in front of me and the other attorney, Wingle says. On multiple occasions, I had colleagues come to me distressed and often crying about how Heather had treated them that day. She's an emotional extortionist. Bing, bang, boom, of course. After six months, Wengel found a new job. Several other female executives told Variety that Perry seemed to single them out for abuse. She would launch feuds with female rivals and engage in Machiavellian power plays. She's a narcissist, y'all. This is textbook narcissism. We have a business that lends itself to narcissism. It's narcissism bait. Are you kidding me? Anything that you put your name in lights, that's narcissism bait right there. In response to the story, Live Nation's Productions made two people available to speak in support of Perry. Ryan Croft was hired to run the company's unscripted programming in August. He is gay and says he never heard the use the term or behave in a phobic, homophobic wave. There's a culture in the entertainment business of being of people being pretty tough. Croft says she's definitely demanding. She knows what she wants and is not afraid to direct and asking for it and correcting you if she feels if she doesn't feel she got what she wanted. Diddy, who produced the documentary Can't Stop, Won't Stop with Perry, says he too had never heard her make a discriminatory remark. I heard she was tough. I think some jobs you gotta be tough, Combs says. I never heard her do anything or say anything negative. Expect to try to complete the job to the best of her ability. Sometimes people take it that another way. That's my interaction with her. I can't speak for anybody else. That was his half-hearted way of saying, um, yeah, she didn't do it to me, so whatever. Um, 
The hashtag Me Too and Time's Up movement has transformed how workplaces deal with sexual harassment and discrimination and have led to quick firings for executives who use unacceptable language in the office, including most recent Netflix chief communications officer Jonathan Fieldland and and Paramount television president Amy Powell. Amy Powell got ousted here recently. But bullying employees is still largely accepted in Hollywood. Some argue that there are rationales for it. It toughens people up. It weeds out who those who can't hack it. And it's an essential part of the creative process. Um, okay, so this article goes on and on and on about workplace bullying. Um, what gets really crazy is there's 266 comments. Um, on This is really not working. 266 comments. Do you see this? Okay. So a lot of these comments are in fact Heather commenting back to people on this every because everybody's like, again, it's a Brutus Caesar thing, much like Harvey Weinstein. When you abuse or Bob, um, when you abuse so many people for so long and you've made a name for yourself abusing people, once finally some one person gets that first stab everybody else goes get him get him get him get him and it becomes this brutus caesar moment and everybody's got hooks for you she's always been super super nice to people that can a or a a big deal and b can do things for her um and they even if people like and that happens like for whatever reason, people think that people are a big deal or like gonna do things for you. Ninety-nine point nine 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 percent of the time, that's not the case. Um, it's people that you've never really heard of, people that are not in Us Weekly or Star Magazine all the time. Uh, those are the people that can actually do things for you, if and when they choose to, or you have the skill set to back it up. Anyway, um, I said that to say this. I worked super hard to try to get somebody to talk to me that wasn't in this article that had worked for HP at some time. And I reached out to several, several people because she can't keep an assistant. There's tons of them. Um, If you go on her IMDb and you look at every single movie, every single project, she has, you know, one to two assistants, you know, the credit will be like assistant to Miss Perry. Um, and you'll never see them again. And then you look at their IMDBs, and more often than not, it's the only thing, the only credit they've ever done. They leave the business. Um, and the truth of the matter is, is that people say things like, oh, it's a tough business. You, you got to weed out the weak ones. Like, first of all, like the amount of work that you have to do. Um, the creative process like comes out of you as a being and that will weed out people point blank period. Like you don't need to yell at people to quote unquote, weed them out. Like they'll weed themselves out. That's not, that's literally not a problem. Um, getting people out of the business is like super easy. They do it to themselves all the time. That's definitely not something that we really like need to focus on around here. On top of that, like people won't even say her name. They won't talk to like she, they want it. They want nothing to do with that part of their lives. Like they just shut it off and it's, you know, I get it. It makes sense. What is this weird noise in my ear? Anyway. Um, so I really tried to get somebody to talk about it, but they won't, they just will not. But the major secret here is, is like, it's been no secret around town that Heather Perry is, you know, a nut job and she's completely a self-obsessed narcissist obviously look at her um she is a far cry from the likes of kathleen kennedy and such um she's made she's made a lot of projects she has but it's (sighs) working in this business is not about getting your hair blown out every day and the Botox and all this, like, that's not what it's about. It's about, you know, putting stuff out that came out of you as a person. Like that's, that's what it's about. And there's no, like truly like, yes, dealing with other people is hard, but dealing with people like her is what's hard about this business. Like newsflash people. We're not out here 
busting up rocks on a chain gang. There's way, way, way harder, more intense professions. We don't save lives in film and television like we do for camera, but not really. Like, we're not doing brain surgery. We're not putting people on the moon. Like, not literally, anyway. Like, there's so many other professions in this world that are way more intense, way more difficult, that require a way higher level of intelligence and grit and all that than this business. It is making a movie or making a TV show or, you know, making music is, in fact, hour and in labor intensive. Every single little teeny tiny piece is an army of people trying to take care of it. And anything that you see on screen or hear coming out of a speaker has been worked on by an army of people. And that's great and wonderful. And that's just kind of the process and how it, um, how it works. But I think if you ask anybody who's really, really, really working in the business, how difficult their job is in comparison to other professions, they'll probably tell you not very. Like, there's a really, really fantastic scene that I think about in um, this movie, Nine, that consequently is made by the Weinstein Company. But um, there's a quote in there from Judy Dench, and she's talking to Daniel Day-Lewis because he's, like, the director of the thing or whatever. And um, she's like, directing, all you have to do is, you know, you just make a decision. You say yes, you say no. You say yes, you say no. You say yes, you say no. And that's 100% true. Like, it's just decision-making. Can you make a decision? Great. Like, and I always tell people, like, if you can be a single mom, you can produce film and TV. Like, it's like the literally the same things come out of my mouth as single moms. I'm just telling adults it, not children. Um, and there's just no reason to behave this way. Like if you have it in your heart, if you have it on your spirit to abuse people because you think it's fun, because it makes you feel better because you think you're so important, you're not, you're not important at all. And you know that, which is why you're so insecure. You know that your job's not that hard to do. You just weaseled your way into it somehow. That's it. You're not incredibly talented and the town can't function without you. This town has been churning for over a hundred years now. Like it's a machine. You'll get washed out just like everybody else. Like staying the course is the hardest part. Not. Oh my God. I work so hard. I need 10 assistants to fold my underwear and put butter on my dog's food. Like. No. No, you don't. Definitely, like, why don't you have a housekeeper? What's wrong with you? You need, you need, a, like, you need assistance to fold your underwear? Get a housekeeper. Come on. Seriously? Ugh. So that is, um, that is, that is my rant about Heather Perry. Um, good riddance. Um, she'll probably get ousted in some fashion. And... I'm sure it's put a bad taste in other people's mouth. I haven't really talked to that many people, but people around here don't really want to talk about it. But um, I think it'll develop over time, and she'll probably end up getting ousted from from Live Nation, and that's fine. They'll move on. They'll get somebody else. Like, there's more people. There's more people to be had, which is, I think, probably the biggest lesson out of this whole Me Too movement is that that old guard can become the formal guard real real quick and the new guard just gets on in and just starts making stuff and hits the ground running because it's possible because it's just not that difficult it's just not we're not breaking rocks on a chain gang or anything so with that being said thanks for stopping by no filter friday i will see you all next week for some other shenanigans because on monday kevin spacey's getting arraigned in nantucket hey it's gonna be super fun so come back next week it's gonna be crazy i can already tell and i will see you all then see you later bye